So I was reading this issue of Vanity Fair magazine recently. I uh, get this for $2 a year through Blue Dolphin. I don't spend actual money on this propaganda. When I happened upon this fine piece of media hypocrisy in the first page editorial by editor Rashida Jones. She writes, I don't know why it took so long. Or no, I do. Structural sexism and individual misogyny. But finally, multiple women are running for president, and that will keep happening, and eventually one of them will win. And if you don't think structural sexism and individual misogyny are a thing, I refer you to Vanessa Grigoriadis' column on Jeffrey Epstein, whose abuse of girls suggests not only that he and his high-flying cohorts were perfectly comfortable in a world that allowed them to treat women like toys, but that they never expected to be held accountable for it. Uh, let me correct you on something here, Rashida Jones. Jeffrey Epstein did not get away with his crimes for so long because of... L let me check this. Because of structural sexism and individual misogyny. No, Jeffrey Epstein got away with his crimes for so long because of you. You, Vanity Fair magazine, chose not to report allegations of sexual abuse by his victims in 2003, five years before Jeffrey Epstein was arrested on charges of sexually abusing minors. In a New York Times article about Vanity Fair columnist Vicki Ward, Mark Tracy writes, In an interview on Tuesday, Miss Ward said that two young women, who are sisters, had separately given her on-the-record interviews to describe their claims of sexual misconduct against Mr. Epstein. One of the two women was under 18 at the time of the events she described, and their mother corroborated the accounts, also on the record, Miss Ward said. Here's what then-editor and relentless anti-Trump propagandist Graydon Carter had to say about his decision to bury the story. There were not three sources on the record, and therefore this aspect of the story did not meet our legal and editorial standards. Well, so much for hashtag believe all women, am I right? In a second emailed statement, Mr. Carter said, If we had had three people on the record willing to stand up for us in court if Epstein had chosen to sue, we would have run it. Period. End of story. And yet you and every other media outlet had no problem heavily publicizing every completely uncorroborated allegation against Donald Trump and Brett Kavanaugh. After the article was published, the three women decided against going on the record in any possible later story, Miss Ward said. They felt this was exactly what they feared would happen, that they wouldn't be believed, she said. So yes, Rashida, even though you try to attribute sanction of Epstein's crimes to the spectral boogeyman of structural sexism, implicating me and every other male in the process, it was the cowardice of your publication that enabled the rape of untold numbers of underage girls. You guys didn't even report the allegations to the authorities. Now, there is a deflating atheism connection here. As it happens, Jeffrey Epstein was an atheist. He was a vocal atheist, and in fact, he was heavily involved in promoting and funding the superstar atheists of the 2000s. Here's a photo of high-profile atheists Steven Pinker, Daniel Dennett, and Richard Dawkins flying on Jeffrey Epstein's private jet in 2002. Epstein was actually flying Dawkins to California for a TED Talk Dawkins was to give, a talk which would inaugurate his career as a celebrity atheist. Through the years, Epstein would support Dawkins and Pinker through the half a million dollars worth of donations he gave to the Edge Foundation, run by John Brockman, also featured in this photo. Celebrity atheist also ran PZ Myers was also the beneficiary of the Edge Foundation's largesse, as John Brockman gave Myers a substantial advance for his middling new atheist tome, The Happy Atheist. Meanwhile, Jeffrey Epstein propped up Myers' science blog's website through the millions he gave to the Seed Media Group. Despite its name, science blogs was actually little more than the sounding board for Myers' own anti-theistic vitriol. The blog Shadow to Light documents many of New Atheism's financial ties to Epstein. Links provided in the description. Oh look, here's Jeffrey Epstein hanging with his BFFs Lawrence Krauss and Steven Pinker in 2014 after he had been arrested and convicted for sexually abusing minors. As it happens, Jeffrey Epstein gave $2 million to Krauss's project at Arizona State University. Krauss was fired from ASU once he had his own run-ins with Me Too. So we see Jeffrey Epstein belong to the same moneyed, secular, liberal milieu as the rest of the mainstream media, no wonder they did everything they could to try to protect him. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe.